Which is the best sleep tracker? Aura, Whoop, or Garmin? I've been wearing sleep trackers for over three years now, and I've been wearing all three for the last three months to find out the answer to that question. We'll be covering the scientific papers on sleep trackers, my own data and opinions on what's best, and the return on investment based on cost. I'll give each a gold star if it wins in a category. At the end, I'll also give you advice regarding orthosomnia, as well as how to get the most out of sleep tracking. Regarding my experience, firstly, I have worn sleep trackers for over three years now. I work in the area of sleep performance, and I am someone who used to have terrible sleep. Here are my sleep scores on Garmin from 2021 to 2022. Now you can see what they are for 2024. Trust me when I say the data you see is at least vaguely accurate. How I feel and look now compared to back in early 2021 is very indicative. I've been sharing my sleep scores every week for over a year now. I've been wearing all three. So I'm probably in a position which very few people are in terms of comparing these products because I've got first hand experience. Enough talk, what do I think? So we'll start with looking at Garmin. Now I wear the Garmin Tactics Delta Solar. So it's one of the higher end ones. Keep this in mind. Now, firstly, I do find it very comfortable. It's on me all the time, sleeping, bath, shower, no matter what, it's not a problem for me. In addition to this, it has a really nice battery life. In general, I would say it reflects how I feel 90% of the time when it comes to sleep score. One thing to say about Garmin, it's very hard to get a high score. In three years, I got a score of 99 one time, and I've got 98, maybe two or three times, so it's quite conservative. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. There's not really a negative to say about Garmin from my personal experience. Now, Aura. I have to say it's not so comfortable for me. It messes up the skin under my finger, so I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of, my skin underneath the finger isn't very nice. I know this is normal with wearing rings, but it's just a negative for me in my book. Outside of its bachelor life, about six days, so it's okay, but it is annoying. Sometimes you're just gonna forget. In terms of sleep, it's pretty bang on. I would say a little bit better than Garmin. Garmin is a bit easier to trick or it just misses things out when Aura normally does pick up awakenings and things like this. It's nearly impossible to get a high score on Aura, I must say. Like I've had a score of 97 maybe once or twice. In general, getting a score of 90 is wow. It's really, really good. And uh, very few people are getting a weekly score of 90. I'll tell you that right now. Now, when it comes to Whoop, I'd say it's pretty comfortable. I'm not personally a fan of how it looks. I think battery is okay, a little bit better than Aura, but not amazing. In terms of sleep, Whoop scores are simply different. Whoop pays attention to sleep debt. I, it makes an estimation of how long you need to sleep, and if you don't get that time, it will highly punish you. Vice versa, if you get enough sleep, the score will nearly always be 100%. I was always wondering how Brian Johnson got 100% sleep scores, and the answer is he uses Whoop. Trust me, there's a 0% chance he'll get a perfect week with an Aura or Garmin. Never mind six months of perfect scores. So Whoop is a little bit suspect, to be honest with you. If you want a device that makes you feel guilty for not sleeping enough, it's fantastic. But if you're looking for objective sleep each day, I'm not a fan because ultimately you can just spend 10 hours in bed and it'll just give you a high score. It doesn't really measure the quality of sleep from my experiences of using it so far. Overall, here's some statistics that I have. Over the last 12 weeks, below are my average sleep scores. More or less, all three devices report the same. You can find a lot of my sleep data on LinkedIn or Instagram if you're looking at the bigger picture. But long story short, Aura and Garmin, on average, give the same scores every single week. Because of this, if I could only have one tracker, I'd keep my Garmin. But if I was someone with sleep issues, which I'm not these days, thankfully, I'd be a bit more tempted by Aura. But fair is fair, and I'm gonna give the gold star in this category to Garmin. Some ground rules here. I'm only looking at studies after 2023 when I can. The main reason is device algorithms change all the time. Hence, studies from two years ago are not so helpful for judging those devices now. This paper from February 2024 compares Aura and Fitbit to PSG. PSG stands for polysomography. This is basically medical grade sleep monitoring. Key points, it has been suggested that Aura and Fitbit are okay for good sleepers, but if you have major sleep issues, they are a lot less accurate. Overall, the study showed Dream, which is a high grade sleep tracker, did best. With Aura coming behind, 
Aura has an accuracy around 64% in stage two and around 55 to 70% in stage four. And both Aura and Fitbit had good results overall for sleep accuracy. Now, a key thing to mention here is this study was funded by Aura. So you need to have a slight level of skepticism here. It's great the companies are investing in science. These are all in scientific journals, therefore they are legitimate, but there is a level of bias because it's here and we all know within science, there are mistakes that happen and bias does impact results. This 2023 study compares 11 different wearables, sadly not including Whoop or Garmin. This diagram shows the overall results. A sleep app called Sleep Routine reported the best results. Aura generally did okay, performing especially well for sleep latency, which basically means knowing when you fall asleep. One thing to mention with this study is some of the scientists are affiliated with the sleep app called Sleep Routine. So once again, we need to be a little bit skeptical of these results. In this 2024 study, it showed similar to the last. Aura underestimated light sleep, and in this, Garmin was not so great for deep sleep. All of them had a low bias of REM accuracy. Long story short, they're not super accurate. In this 2024 study, it showed similar to the last. Aura underestimated light sleep, and for Garmin, it was not so accurate for deep sleep. And all of them had a low bias for REM sleep. Long story short, they were not so accurate. This 2024 study on Aura was generally pretty positive and suggesting it is comparable to PSG. But you might have guessed this was also funded by Aura. When it comes to Garmin, there are very few new studies. The best I had is this 2022 study, which I know is breaking my 2023 rule, but I couldn't find much else on Garmin. Long story short, it showed Garmin Forerunner was not super accurate and it wouldn't be useful for giving precise data. Now finally, Whoop, and only from 2020, again, I'm afraid, no recent studies, it did show that Whoop was generally okay, except for calculating sleep time, where it's off by sometimes eight to 30 minutes. There is also this 2020 study speaking well of Whoop, but this one was only one night comparison and also it was funded by Whoop. There's one study I will talk about that covers the impact of wearing wearables for sleep, but I'll cover that later in this video. There are plenty more studies you can look at, but many are older or just don't compare the devices. There isn't much heavy evidence out there. And even if there was, given the devices are changing all the time, it's hard to really judge devices on this. Another thing to mention is these studies look at the stages, but rarely look at the sleep score. Both Aura, Whoop, Garmin, you have a sleep score based on their algorithm. As this is very subjective, I'm guessing scientists just decided to leave this alone, which means we don't really know how good the overall sleep scores are. However, the more accurate the data is, we can make an assumption that better sleep scores would come from better data. That said, it does seem scientists seem to prefer Aura and Fitbit. Now, if this is because of their price or popularity or performance, we don't know, but I will be giving the gold medal in this category to Aura. It's mentioned in the good light and needy all the studies I could find. Wolf and Garmin, the jury is still out on this. There's very little scientific studies covering these devices. And the ones that are out there are kind of getting a bit old at this point. If you found this video helpful so far, I'd appreciate if you could like and subscribe. It will help other people find it. And also on top of this, you can learn more about sleep and performance. And finally, return on investment based on cost. The Garmin Tactics Delta on average is at $850. It's really hard to know if the quality seat tracking drops with other models, but I suspect it would. So you have to keep that in mind. This makes Garmin the most expensive. However, there's no monthly costs and the Garmin offers a watch. Many other metrics to measure and means you don't need to be on your phone all the time, which is generally not great for sleep. Aura, it's about 350 to $400 per month. Half a price. Hey, it's Matt from the future here. I made a little bit of a mistake when I quoted the Aura price. So just to tell you the correct information, Aura is about $350 to $400, and then you're paying a $5 per month fee. It may be different when you see it, but this is just roughly what you're expecting to pay. Going back to the past. The price, but you are paying a monthly fee. So if you use it for three or four years, you're basically paying the same price as Garmin. It's quite a big investment, and it's really best use of sleep. It offers other measurements, but as I mentioned before, given a lot of the sports I do, you often need to take it off for sport, like weightlifting, things like this. Hence, I don't honestly see it's a legitimate fitness tracker, given that you can't really wear it for a lot of fitness. Whoop is free, but you pay a monthly fee of $35. So in two to three years, you're basically paying the same as a Garmin. 
It is a good fitness tracker and it's a good app, maybe more friendly than Garmin in terms of its usability. Whoop is very good advertising, so it's become a lot more popular and you see a lot of celebrities using it, but 30 bucks a month is a lot and it will catch up with you quite soon. A lot depends on your preferences, but I don't like having monthly costs. So for me, a one-off payment for Garmin, it's the best, but all three are similar. So if you just want to track your sleep for two to three months, Whoop may actually be the best option. So you just get it and then cancel. All in all, it's close, but I'm giving the gold star to the Garmin tactics for this one. It's Matt from the future one more time. In summary, the winner of the scientific category went to Aura. The winner of the My Experience Award went to Garmin. And the winner of the prize went to Garmin too. Therefore, the overall winner is Garmin with two skull stars to one for Aura and zero to Whoop. Now this might surprise a lot of people who are watching this. A lot of you will be thinking Aura or Whoop would win. They're more famous and more talked about. But based on the criteria I set at the very beginning of this video, that is the result. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. And if you're curious to learn a bit more about trackers, you have some questions about these devices, I recommend you follow me on Instagram and message me there. I'll come back to everybody as quickly as I can. Now, I mentioned I'd go back to one study earlier. And this 2018 study showed something very interesting. By people seeing their sleep scores, some then felt worse. Long story short, sleep scores can be adding more stress and actually be more harmful than good. This is a condition called orthosomnia. Given that we know sleep trackers are not super accurate and a lot of people react in a negative way to the data they get from the sleep trackers, you have to make a big question if you actually should be using one. As you can see from my old data and new data, typically sleep trackers data over monthly and yearly periods is accurate. This is because inaccuracies are less prevalent when looking at bigger data sets. So my advice, if you can't help but checking your sleep score every day and it affects you, best to not have a sleep tracker in all honesty. If you're able to resist, check your scores every few days, once a week, and you're not affected by it, then it is a useful tool. Overall, let's just be honest, sleep trackers will not fix your sleep. For that, you need to make changes in your life but it can help confirm if things are working or maybe if you need to simply reach out for help. If you are curious to know more about the real causes of poor sleep, you can check my sleep quiz in the link in the comments. Much love and peace.